Yes. <laughs> yes, yes. It's Sir David the Bard. And uh, I just got thinking about something that makes me pissed off. <laughs> and as you know, I have a tendency to uh, speak my mind a little bit. Um, my brother, and, and I'll give you his name because I think he's dead. <laughs> If he's not, I wish he would be. <laughs> His name is Randy. Oh, Randy, Randy. And uh, he's uh, the next one down. I'm the oldest um, uh, bard. <laughs> he's no bard at all. <laughs> and he's the next one down. I think he's 63 or something. Anyway, when we were growing up, in, uh, in California before I had to hibernate down here and hide down here in Kangaroo City. Um, we went to uh, a ward. It was called Ojai. O-J-A-I. Ojai Ward. And um, one of the bishops <coughs> was uh, Bill Jackson. Now Bill Jackson became eventually, uh, he's a doctor, and he became a mission president in the Philippines. And I've come across uh, some people that know Bill Jackson that way. And, um, you know, Bill Jackson was handsome, he's rich, <laughs> he was funny, he was clever. Everyone hated him. <laughs> so, when I competed with him, <laughs> he often won, and that pissed me off. But anyway, uh, he was our bishop, and kind of a self-righteous asshole, in my opinion. But the other people, uh, he, he walked on water. And in California, there's a lot of water at the beach. So anyway, um, he had an office there in Ojai, and he treated people. Uh, <laughs> I remember a funny incident. Uh, his ceiling fan came off the ceiling uh, in the waiting room while it was running. <laughs> so he had to treat some of the patients for extra injuries. Uh, and Bill, <laughs> Bill and I didn't get along. You know, he uh, he had a Jaguar, uh, and it's a car, not not the animal. And um, <clears throat> I was <clears throat> jealous of him, and I was a kid, and he was you know ten years old or something. And uh, I found a dead cat. <laughs> he was over at the hospital, and his car was parked there. And in that town, we never lock a car or a house. And um, I put the dead cat on his seat of the Jaguar, the, the leather. <laughs> he knew who did it. <laughs> he knew who did it. So, you know, there were uh, mean practical jokes uh, that went one way. I did them, <laughs> and he tolerated them. <laughs> so he had this office over here, this place. Now, let me get to the damn subject, which I <laughs> never do. This brother, Randy... Uh, has never um, distinguished himself with experience, education, knowledge. <laughs> if there's a walking asshole in the world other than me, he's quickly right behind me. So I went to college. I went off to a BYU. And um, I had a hard time there. That was the uh, hardest time of my life because um, my parents <laughs> didn't help me at all. I was the first uh, Mr. Bard, if you look in the uh, <laughs> Mormon genealogy under Sir David the Bard, no one had an education, so I thought, well, I'll go. And um, my high school counselor, I put out on another video, she laughed her ass off. She said, you won't make it in college 10 minutes. So that was a challenge to the bard. I stayed 20. <laughs> Showed her. <laughs> so uh, I went to BYU, and uh, my parents didn't buy me any uh, special clothing like a lot of parents do. Uh, my parents didn't uh, help pay tuition. Uh, they did not uh, pay for any of my food or my housing. Uh, I had to sell my car uh, for tuition money to get there. And I had to fill the applications out. My parents were too dumb. They couldn't fill the applications out. And um, I had no scholarship. And um, I did have uh, a Pell Grant. I did have a student loan for some of the semesters that I was there. And um, when I graduated, I quickly paid them off <laughs> like every other student. <laughs> Changed my name to protect the guilty. 
<laughs> and uh, anyway, we're not going to go into student loans. That was a long time ago, folks. And th there is a statute of limitations <laughs> for <laughs> criminal, uh, not criminal, but for uh, even um, civil um, uh, activity regarding debt. So anyway. Um, I didn't have any help going to college and uh, my parents were too stupid to help with homework or they were in California but I and I was in Utah but uh, there was no support there they didn't give a rat's ass whether I went to college or not and uh, they showed that with their attitude and if I'd come home with a new idea and try to talk to my dad it had anything to do that didn't fit the Mormon church uh, ridiculousness, uh, you know, then he would have a, a conniption fit and uh, wouldn't talk to me and said, I'm learning uh, things of the devil. <laughs> so I love a BYU. Oh, anyway, he was a fanatic in the Mormon church. Here's the long story short. I, I distinguish myself a little bit. I mean, I have uh, almost two master's degrees. I have a completed one, and I have one at Springfield College that has 28 units on it. And I had um, um, an A. Uh, on my first master's degree, I had an A minus. I had one C out of whatever, 17, 13 uh, units. I don't know. But anyway, <coughs> I uh, wrote a small book and never got published on a sudden infant death and um, I had been invited to speak at universities and um, government agencies and you know I'm not trying to puff myself up here <laughs> I've been doing that for years <laughs> look at this <laughs> It's the Play-Doh man. What was that guy's name? The uh, Doughboy <laughs> Pillsbury. <laughs> Doughboy. Uh, anyway you know, I've had a, a successful life. I've worked hard. Uh, I have a certain degree of intelligence. <laughs> At least I got out of the Mormon church. I was smart enough to do that. And um, I worked hard. I mean, I didn't graduate BYU in four years. I graduated in five and a half years. Now, that wasn't, that part of that was stupidity in IQ, but most of it, I ran out of money. And I'd have to call my parents up and say, is it okay if I come home and sleep on the carpet uh, and uh, get a full-time job and pay and get my money built up and go back and buy another semester? And they would let me do that, and I appreciate that. Well, then I was married uh, in my um, sophomore year, and I had to take my wife and my children back to California and lay on the damn carpet and uh, get a job and again they never you know, raised an eyebrow about me being in college and they never of course my parents were like me they had no friends but even if they had a friend they would never have said the bard is in college and he's cool you know other people thought I was cool that were in the community but <laughs> not my my family just toxic totally toxic so my brother Randy you know he he's full of shenanigans uh, he knows everything uh, he thinks that more words make more true, so he'll talk to you until you fall into the ground. <laughs> then he thinks, it must have been the truth, the guy died. <laughs> anyway, he decided he was going to go on a mission. I, I like girls. I do want to go on a mission. You know, girls have certain things that I kind of liked, <laughs> and I still do. <laughs> this conversion idea of becoming gay. You know, if 90,000 gay men walked in my little office here today with erections and said, what do you think? I'd say, I think it's crowded in here. Get the hell out of here. Now, if all the BYU cheerleaders walked in with, you know, their uh, little um, present between their legs, I wouldn't throw them out. And, hey, we can make more room. How many more can you get in? Another. You can always get one more in. So, anyway... My brother decides he wants to go on a mission for the Mormon church. And, of course, I was a disappointment to my father. And uh, he's a fanatical in the church and a child molester, which <laughs> you have to be a child molester to be baptized if you're a male in the Mormon church. <laughs> so anyway, my brother said, I'll get even with the bard. Uh, I'm going to go on a mission because I know my dad is a fanatic and he'll love me more. <laughs> kind of like the Smothers Brothers. You're all too young to know the Smothers Brothers. But Mom Loved Me More was one of their, their gags. 
Anyway, he got called on a mission to, um, oh Lord, was Iowa or Missouri, somewhere in the middle of the United States, because he's too stupid to learn a foreign language. And who knows if he graduated from high school. Anyway, here's my point. And I guess I'm, I'm being, I have a certain amount of levity to it, because uh, it's, it's upsetting to me. So I'm, I'm projecting, I'm covering up the anguish and the uh, sadness and the self-esteem damage uh, that uh, this situation caused. I'm so old now, I, I don't worry about things that used to happen. Uh, they still hurt, but I don't focus on them. I don't do videos on them like the one I'm doing here. <laughs> I'm sorry, I lied to you again. I tell you, I'll never lie to you. I just lied. I just lied. Anyway, my dad thought Randy's mission was so important that he got a second job. He got a second job to pay for Randy's mission. Now, all the years I lived with my parents, which was up to 18 or 19 when I went to BYU, he never got a second job for anything. He wasn't a lazy man. My dad did work. He took good care of our family. And he was a good dad other than um, uh, putting his penis uh, all over my sister for two or three years when she was 12 years old. And that is not on his resume. At least it's not on the good side of his resume. But other things, he, he was all in all a, a, uh, a decent, good human being. <laughs> with a terrible character flaw. Anyway, he goes over to work for Bill Jackson. <laughs> Bill Jackson. And Bill Jackson hated me, so he loved this scenario. So he says to my dad, you can come over to my office and clean it at night, and I'll pay you, and then you can send money uh, to keep Randy on his mission. Well, why was Randy's mission more important than my college education. Now, you Mormons that are watching me, obviously you have an answer for that because you've been programmed to answer that. But the normal people that watch me, why, why shouldn't I have a little bit of parental uh, praise and um, uh, positive self-esteem? Gee, uh, Mr. Bard, uh, Sir David, we, we're proud of you going to college. You're the first one in our entire uh, family tree. <laughs> the rest of them are all monkeys in that tree. <laughs> You're the only one that is falling out of the tree, and obviously the monkey don't fall too far from the tree. But I do have an education. God, you know, I know some shit that other people don't know. And, uh, and I'm proud of that. But I'm proud of that because it's me uh, being proud of it. And my family, uh, they were toxic. They never gave me a dime. They never helped me. They phone, no phone calls, no letters. Oh, but the missionary, he got his damn letters every month or week. And uh, so anyway, um, I wanted to bring up to uh, you as an audience. Now, I've got 14 kids. Uh, I've disowned about seven or eight of them. I never want to see them again because they love their underwear more than their father. So that shows <laughs> the, their IQ level and the cult that they belong to. But anyway, um, you can't treat children equally. That's a lie. You never can treat them equally because they're all different. They all bring different needs, wants, and talents to the table. But you can treat and must treat them fairly. Fair, not equal. I don't think paying for my brother's mission and not even saying or giving me a dollar for my college education is fair. Now, I don't expect it to be equal. Life is not equal. Uh, like I said, we're all different and we all have uh, different talents we bring to the table and, and liabilities we bring to the table. But my dad thought, because he was in the cult and because he was uh, fanatical, uh, God dang, he was uh, you know, the teacher of the investigators class, and he was also, back in those days, the Sunday school superintendent. <laughs> superintendent of what? But anyway, he had the title, and he cherished that, and uh, he believed he was going to get into heaven uh, supporting my brother uh, on a mission. Now, my brother... <laughs> 
<clears throat> my and I know my brother watches these and he gets so pissed off. <laughs> he makes up new names. He's very good on the computer. He makes up new names for himself, like he's been to the temple again and uh, makes nasty comments under the name of somebody else. So he has a certain degree of of uh, mentality. But anyway, um, today he's not married. He's divorced. And he lives in the Philippines because when he was working in the United States, um, he lied, he cheated, and he stole. He wouldn't pay Social Security. Uh, he was in construction. He was paid under the table constantly. And he thought that was a good deal. <laughs> now, at retirement and Social Security uh, uh, benefits, it doesn't look that good now. <laughs> but, hey, that's the way he is. He doesn't look down the road and see, you know, the train wreck coming at him. So he's got $500 a month that he lives on, and he can't live in the United States. Uh, so he goes to the Philippines, and he's a rich American uh, living in the Philippines. He um, has chosen that road, and my dad poured money into that shit. Now my brother's not even a, Mo uh, a Mormon anymore. He resigned from the Mormon church, and uh, he has some intelligence to get there and out of there. But anyway, I wanted to bring up, as uh, so many of you are in your late 30s and early 40s that watch me, you can't treat children equal. And you know what? You can't treat them fair, what they think is going to be fair, at different ages. I had uh, a, a autistic son, Aaron, and my children who are normal intelligence uh, have said to me, Dad, you spent too much time with Aaron. I didn't get much attention. Well, those things happen in life. You try to teach or, or treat the children fairly, but you can't equally. Aaron needed constant supervision and attention, and <clears throat> that took time away from the other children. But be that as it may, if you don't have a retarded or an autistic child or a seriously disabled child, Sometimes you can do things for them when they're six years old. Six years, there's a couple of six-year-olds that really want to do dance or karate or whatever, and so you do that. But then there's another one that you don't do shit for until they're 14, and suddenly they're 14, and uh, they're you know needing to to get driver's training, and and you loan them the car and whatever to get their driver's license. So what I'm saying is there's got to be a balance in a family there, and my dad owes me. My dad owes me. God dang. You know, he spent thousands of dollars for Randy to run around the Midwest and uh, act idiotic. He drove the missionary car to the drive-in <laughs> with his companion and three or four girls. And, and, and I'm paying for this, and the Mormon church is rubber stamping it, and, or dad is paying for it. And, and I don't get any support at, at school. Now, when I look back, uh, I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm independent. I paid for my damn education. I worked nights. I worked days. I, I was in the mud and the blood and the beer to support that damn family and to uh, pay my tuition and get my ass out of bed and go take tests and memorize shit. And um, it gave me better jobs. It gave me a higher social security check. <laughs> Randy's. <laughs> Yeah, that's a piss in the wind, Randy's amount, but that's what he earned. He thought he could cheat the government and not pay taxes. He's never filed a tax return in his life. <laughs> I do every year. Uh, I'm not comparing Randy and I, but look where my dad put his investment, and look what he got. Look what he got. I've at least adopted two more children uh, from the Philippines and made their lives better and married my wife and immigrated her. And so the investment I put in myself has paid off magnificently in my old age. The investment that the Mormons throw at each other with a few hundred dollars here and a few thousand there and thinking they can buy their way into God's kingdom or whatever, look, look what they get, you know. I'm laughing my ass off with Monson sending 18-year-olds on missions. Monson was in charge of that, I forget what it's called, the Green Witch or some green something uh, homosexual program down at BYU, putting electrodes on erections. Well, six of those boys killed themselves. 
under Monson's uh, watch. And then Monson went over to uh, Beneficial Life, which was well over 100 years old, uh, and he bankrupted that company. It went out of business under his watch. Now he's the watch of the Mormon Church and builds a $5 billion City Creek Mall and is sending 18-year-olds out to third world countries like they're going to be able to handle themselves. This guy is, is a train wreck coming at you. And you're going to see the Mormon Church take a, a turn for the worse. That's for, I don't know. Maybe it can't turn worse. Maybe it just turns round and round to the worse. But, you know, if, if Boyd K. Packer becomes the next president of the Mormon Church, I can see its demise. I can see the Mormon Church finally going. You know, we've got 4 million members right now that actually go to church. The other 10 million don't have anything to do with us and don't want anything to do with us. And uh, once Packer gets in there, that could drop to, to, to uh, you know, 2,000. So anyway, treat our children fair. Not equal, fair. But here I am, I'm pushing 66 now, <laughs> and I'm pissed. I'm pissed. It's taken me a long time to realize that my dad loves his underwear more than he loved me. And when you wear the same underwear as my dad, uh, he'll pay money to you. If you don't wear that underwear, uh, you don't get the extra money as a child. So as a parent, um, other than molesting my sister, <laughs> he was a pretty good dad. And other than paying for my brother and getting a second job uh, with Bill Jackson and collusion with him and making me feel like dog shit, I had to work full time since I was, well, I, I had um, 15. I wasn't working full time. All the hours after school and on Saturdays and mostly Sundays, uh, I worked. I worked. And uh, I have my whole life. But my brother... <laughs> uh, anyway, there's your return missionary, and there is the results of that investment. Thanks.